which should result eventually in job creation. That's exactly what we are trying to accomplish as a government here. As was mentioned earlier, Hyderabad has a fabulous ecosystem of institutions of national and international repute in, the, in a variety of disciplines. We have IKRISAT headquartered here. The International Crop Research Institute, which is headquartered, world headquarters, is right here. We also have a number of wonderful defense, aerospace laboratories, number of scientific institutions, CCMB, IICT, CFDRI, NIN, and nu numerous others that we have them right here. Let me just quickly tell you what all I have learned in the last couple of years as Minister of Industry and Information Technology. I have been raised in Hyderabad. I have lived here for the last 40 years nearly. A lot of things, in fact, that I did not know about, I have learned in the last couple of years. For example, I did not know that Hyderabad essentially was the life sciences capital of India. Hyderabad is the bulk drugs capital of India. Hyderabad is where more than 35% of pharmaceuticals in India are manufactured. In fact, last time I met Shanta Biotech's Vara Prasad Redigaru, I was telling him that uh, Hyderabad is where more than 20% of global vaccines are manufactured. He corrected me. He said it's nearly 40%. Nearly 40% of world vaccines today are manufactured in our country. These are all the hidden facets that I did not know about. Likewise, when it comes to other sectors such as aerospace and defense, I did not know up until I became a minister as a civilian. I, I still am a civilian, but until I actually assumed office, I did not know that Hyderabad had numerous, I of course knew that there were these labs, but Hyderabad I did not know had amazing abilities in the aerospace and defense sector. In fact, as was mentioned by Dr. Satish Reddy, <coughs> Hyderabad today in fact has not only 30,000 plus people working in the aerospace and defense ecosystem, in fact Hyderabad also has nearly, as was mentioned earlier, thousand small and medium enterprises in the aerospace and defense sector. When ISRO sent MOM, the Mars Orbital Mission, more than 30% of the components were manufactured in our own city of Hyderabad by the SME sector in the aerospace and defense fields. <laughs> Donald Trump, President of the United States, might say, I want every single company to manufacture in America and I want every single American to be employed. Of course, that's his job as the President of the United States. But I should share with you that the President of America's, Donald Trump's helicap helicopter cabin today is manufactured in Hyderabad. I don't know how many of you know. I didn't know about it till, till about two years ago. Sikorsky is in Hyderabad and in a joint venture with Tata Advanced Systems Limited, they manufacture President of the United States his own helicopter cabin right here. Likewise, I did not know that Hyderabad had a very strong defense ecosystem which has enabled some very small but small and medium homegrown companies to be directly competing with someone as big as Lockheed Martin, someone as big as Raytheon, someone as big as Rolls Royce. These are amazing stories which are unfolding. And then IT, I don't think I need to say anymore because I do believe most of us are in the know-how that if you look at the top five most valued technology companies in the world, among the top five, four of them have chosen Hyderabad as their largest base outside of the United States. That would include Google, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft. If you look at top ten, you would also have Amazon, you would also have Uber, Salesforce, whose largest bases outside of their headquarters are in our city of Hyderabad. What, what is it that I'm trying to get at? We have all these amazing strengths cutting across disciplines, cutting across different fields. But unfortunately, we all seem to be operating in silos. Our Honorable Chief Minister, Shri K. Chan Shekhar Rao, whenever he talks to us, whenever he advises us, whenever he guides us, whenever he gets the chance to interact with the Industries and Commerce Department, he never fails to remind us. Whenever he sits with anybody who has the know-how of technology or science, he never fails to remind us of one thing. He always says, any science or technology which cannot bring about a societal impact, which cannot bring about a social change, is futile. With all due respect to all the wonderful 
and extraordinary scientists in the room. Our Honorable Chief Minister believes that unless you are able to bring out, unless you are able to bring about a practicality and a societal impact in an emerging country like India, the kind of research we engage in, the kind of science we engage in, will, if it only confines itself to the labs and scientific journals, then it certainly does not serve the complete purpose for which science was founded. So therefore, what, what are we trying to achieve here? What we are trying to achieve is combine the capacity of the human intellect that is available in our own wonderful city of Hyderabad and eventually possibly extend it pan-India and ensure that greater collaboration, greater convergence happens and then we deliver on some tangible goals that we set for ourselves. Let me just give you an example of what is achievable, what is doable if we all apply our human intellect, collective human intellect together. I've recently, in the last, I think last month it was, in January, I visited two amazing nations, which was a great experience for me. South Korea, Republic of Korea, and Japan. Two amazing countries, Asian countries, not too far, not too distant in terms of culture, very, very similar in fact in a lot of ways to India. Two amazing, amazing stories. Let's start with Japan. Japan is a country which, unlike any other country on the planet, had, has had to go through the catastrophic experience of a nuclear attack. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I think everybody knows, 1950s. It's a country today whose population is 12 crores. It's a country which has got a lot of geographical and natural challenges. Seismologically, it's in one of the most unstable locations. Frequent earthquakes, frequent tsunamis, and very inhospitable terrain. Not a lot of natural resources. But what this country has been able to achieve with a population of 12 crores, in spite of all the obstacles that I've just mentioned in the last five decades, is something that the world needs to learn and imbibe from. Just by sheer virtue of human intellect, this country, which was subject to a nuclear attack, has been able to grow itself into the third largest, up until recently it was the second largest, economy in the world. Today, everybody sitting in this room is aware, is conscious, or must be using at least one of the Japanese products which are truly world class. Sony, Panasonic, Mitsubishi, Toyota, Honda, I can go on and on, the list goes on. I'm sure most of your labs where you engage in research have a number of these wonderful products from different Japanese companies. point I'm trying to make is, in spite of all the obstacles, in spite of all the challenges, this country has been able to transcend all of them, overcome all these challenges and today has been able to assert its dominance economically. The third largest economy in the world by sheer virtue of its human intellect. Now, imagine the possibilities if India does the same thing. We are the largest, we have the largest workforce on the planet. We have the largest young population on the planet. More than 65% of India whose current population is 1.3 billion is less than the age group of 35. We have the largest workforce on the planet. We have the largest human intellect on the planet. And we have a number of achievers. Our history, our civilization it goes to show you amazing achievers, amazing scientists, amazing philosophers have come from our own country. Unfortunately, if you look at it, off late, we don't really have, we did not really have Many enterprises, many entrepreneurial ideas come through our country, especially in the last few decades. Now, that is exactly what we're trying to change here. Rich is an effort to try and bring about this synergy, to try and ensure the human intellect that we possess in such large number is actually harnessed to the fullest. Another example is Korea, Republic of Korea, whose population is only 5.8 crores. Only 5.8 crores. No natural resources. In fact, 70% of the country is uninhabitable. It's a largely urban country. 92% of the population resides in 30% of the geographical expanse. The geographical expanse is only 100,000 square kilometers. In fact, Telangana is bigger geographically than the Republic of Korea. We are 114,000 square kilometers. But this country, the population of 5.8 crores, again, no natural resources today has again delivered by virtue of its human intellect.
Today they have been able to produce world class products. Samsung, Kia, LG, Hyundai, several brand names, so very, very well received and well known in India. All again by virtue of human intellect. Now that goes to show you the kind of power, if you harness it well, if you actually are able to drive innovation, drive disruption into the way we think, what can be accomplished and what can be achieved. That's exactly what Rich is said to accomplish and Rich is said to target. Now having said that, we all know, we all keep saying, you know, research is a bedrock of innovation. And we also keep lamenting that not enough research is funded in India by the governments. Yes, we are an emerging nation. We don't have the wherewithal, we don't have the kind of same bandwidth as say United States or Japan in terms of funding our universities, in terms of funding our amazing institutes where amazing research work is going on. Yes, I hear this a lot from the scientific community that if only our government was more supportive in terms of funding, we could also come out with world class inventions. Yes, but that is the challenge we have. We do have the ability, we do have the skills, but unfortunately we don't have the wherewithal, we don't have the capital that is much required. And that's where I think convergence, collaboration has to step in and has to make this learning curve that much more shorter. If you think about it for a second, I think what's extremely important for us to understand is most of us, in fact, I'm, I'm probably I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, big bats for this, but I'm going to go ahead and say that anyway. Even IICT and CCMB, we were right next to each other. I don't know if you guys collaborate as much as you should be. I'm not too sure. We all operate in silos, unfortunately. Well, why, why talk about IICT and CCMB? I'll talk about my own government and my own departments. The right hand does not know what the left hand is doing, unfortunately. That's, that's the reality of our society today. We operate in silos, we operate with blinders. Now that is something Ajit and his team will be trying to change a bit as much as we can. Try and bring about that convergence. Try and bring about a sense of purpose. Try and ensure that this wonderful research that happens in your labs is actually commercialized. Try and ensure that most of these work, most of this amazing work that you do has a societal impact as well. So this is what we've decided to uh, touch upon. Now, the last thing I'd, I'll say before I quit. Honorable Minister for Science and Technology is here. We had a great interaction with him and also his member secretary some time back. Satish Redigaru and others who spoke before me had mentioned that Hyderabad has the largest number of defense and science labs. We have more than 50, if you add them together. But sir, I would also like to put it on record and let you know, your member secretary, Dr. Mittal, had also mentioned, we not only have the largest number of scientific labs, science labs, we also have the largest number of incubators in the country today. ICRISAT having one and IIT Hyderabad having one and CCMB now opening its own innovation lab. Today, we have nearly 20 incubators in our city of Hyderabad, which is the largest in the country for any city. We are very proud that uh, as a city, as was put by Satish Redigaru, the heart of science and technology in this country, we definitely are not only at, uh, uh, the, the synonymous with science, scientific research, we also want to be synonymous with innovation and disruption and therefore, in fact, I've requested MOD as well, Raksha Mansriji as well, to set up his defense incubator. I'll request, fantastic. So Satish, uh, I request you, sir, to also bless us by way of uh, endorsing it, by way of, uh, 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 you know, guiding Honorable Raksha Mansri to get it our way as well. We're extremely delighted that uh, such large number of extraordinary minds have gathered in this room. And I do believe that if we put all of our human intellect collectively together with a sense of purpose to make a societal impact, I think larger good for this country can definitely be accomplished. Thank you very much for this opportunity once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, extremely inspiring uh, remarks. I'm very sure that uh, under the leadership of 